Hi, this is Justice. In the fifth brush creator tutorial, we are talking about grain. Now grain is this right up here. We have our shape and we have our grain. This image right here, this is just a little one I put together. It's got um, three, it's a three by three cube. And so when I click on the screen, what you can see here, this is the center 50% of this cube. If we scroll down here to our grain, you'll see scale is set at 50%. Now, if we bring this up to a hundred percent, notice down here, by the way, the thumbnail for our watercolor brush here is scaling. This is going to give you a really good idea of what's happening as the grain scale is increasing. And what we're seeing right here, this, because we have spacing set at 100, is a single image. Now, if we have this here at 50, and we start to paint on the screen, you're gonna notice that it's doing the same thing as before. This image is right next to itself over and over again. Now, if we turn on tile, Right here, this is going to tile the grain. It's going to put them all together and we're going to be revealing the grain as we paint. Let's go ahead and close that. Now, if we turn on DPI, what this is gonna do, this is going to remember this size. And for this, we're gonna use a different brush. We're gonna use a leaf brush that I created for another tutorial. And we're going to turn DPI on. We go right here so we can see what this looks like. The scale is at 50 and we're going to go right here. And our DPI, we're going to change from 400 to 200. And we're going to click OK. You're going to notice that the canvas size changes. Right here, we're going to paint the grain here this is going to be the exact same size because we have dpi selected now if i uncheck this this is going to compensate for the change in the dpi of the canvas notice that it went to 25. so this is going to be the same if we don't have this selected and we change the canvas size this will not automatically adjust all right let's go ahead and delete that and let's jump back to our liner okay so tiled grain tiled grain looks like this we're revealing the grain that's underneath again that is this side right here not this side and this one this grain by the way has some extra uh, information it's actually a very complicated image with a grid in the background with heavy lines in front and thin lines in the back just so you see it okay so this is grain turned on and this is grain turned off with random offset on. All of these images are going to be slightly adjusted the exact same amount until I put the pen down a second time. Second time, the same offset for the entire stroke. Random splat offset, every image is going to be a different offset than the image before. And again, that is to do with this spacing here. If I bring this over right here, these are going to blend and we're not going to see it the same way. Okay, so let's bring this over here up to 100 again. Now, just like random offset, random angle, this is going to be per stroke. And we are only going to see that if tiled grain is turned on. So let's turn random flat offset off, random angle on, a single stroke, the entire stroke, the grain is the same random angle the whole time. A second stroke, you can see the same thing. It stays consistent. Not every image is different. Angle jitter, just like random's flat offset, angle jitter is every single image is different. So this one 
each time the image is laid down, it's going to be at a slightly different angle. Grain smoothing, we are going to turn back on our leaf brush and with grain smoothing turned on, and we're going to turn all of these off except for this one. All right, for grain smoothing, just a reminder, we are looking at a anti-aliasing for grain, and we're not looking at it for the shape. I brought the scale up quite a bit, and we are in the image library. I'm selecting a leaf for our grain to demonstrate grain smoothing. So you can see here it's pixelated around the edges. If we turn on grain smoothing, it's going to smooth that out. It's going to anti-alias the edges of this so it looks a lot cleaner and softer. For our last two, we're going to look at follow shape size and follow shape rotation. I'm going to clear the layer and we're going to look at both of these. Now for these to work, follow shape size, what we need to do is we need to go up here and allow size to be adjusted of our shape. So what you can see here, this little center square right here is the same size even while the shape is getting larger. Now, if we choose follow shape size, notice here that the, the pattern of the grain is increasing and decreasing. This little center square right here is going much smaller and much larger based on the size of the shape. Okay, let's look at follow shape rotation. So right here for this to work, we must have something turned on. We need to turn rotation on. So here if we follow trajectory. What you'll notice is that the, the rotation of the grain is rotating with the shape. So let's do that again, but let's change this from follow trajectory to pen tilt. So here we have very fine control over what's happening with the grain as well as the shape using rotation of the stylus. Keep in mind you can combine these to make more complex grain patterns and structures using the grain property inside of the brush creator. If you guys have questions or comments, put it in the comment section of this video. In our next video, we're going to be talking about canvas right here, paper texture strength and paper texture contrast, as well as what these curve editors and paper texture scratch does. All right, I'll see you in the next video.